Hi, welcome to Go On The Run. And this video is a user requested video that I, um, I decided to see if I could slip in and see um, maybe if I can do it really quickly because it didn't seem like it was something that was gonna take a long time, but we will see. I don't know yet because I haven't done it yet. So a couple of things about this video. One, it's a user request. And basically it's born out of our section 22 when we're talking about binary encoding and specifically part three, where we're looking at protobuffer and how to use maps and enums and like nested messages. And what this user asks is, hey, can you show me in C++ how to you know do the same sort of thing um, using protobuf essentially with um, C++? And I looked at it a couple of weeks ago and I replied saying basically that, you know, I haven't programmed in C++ for a long time and it's just too much work for me to get my environment set up with all the dependencies and everything. Okay. Um, as this filler video sort of, like I said, one of the things I want to do is upload more videos more frequently and I'll spend less time editing. I think this is a good example of something that I want to try. So I mentioned that, um, I'll, I'm thinking about ways of monetizing the channel and getting some support. And one of those is Patreon. I haven't set up Patreon yet. I've been too busy still to set it up. I still have to post my GoLand course here. So please forgive me if you're waiting for that. I'll try and get it out. Um, I have some vacation time coming up in a couple of weeks. I'm hoping, nah, I'm hoping during that time, I'll absolutely definitely get it out if I don't get it out before then. All right, now back to the Patreon idea. This is going to be an example of one of the things I'm thinking about for Patreon supporters. Imagine that I sell Patreon at several levels and at one of those levels, I raffle off um, some time. And basically the winner of that, the Patreon supporter who wins that um, time that I raffle off, I'll work with them on something that is sort of in line with what we're doing. So like, are we doing um, proto buffer? but maybe it's outside of the main thing we're doing. So for example, applying protobuffer with C++. We're not really doing C++, but we're doing protobuffer. So um, we can probably spend some time and work together to see how to solve problems like um, you might be having that you wanna use with the material we're doing, but I haven't specifically covered. So that's one example. And so this video is an example of that where once I raffle off and I have a raffle winner, they might say, oh, I want to see how you use protobuffer with Java or um, uh, maybe how we do a web application and use protobuffer. And that might be something that I wouldn't cover specifically, but they might be hung up on that. And then we have like a video conference and we work together. Then I'm thinking of another level of Patreon um, subscription where um, those Patreon subscribers at that level, um, we will have like a meetup. Uh, essentially online video conference where it's now going to be all of us, all those Patreon subscribers at that level, and it's going to be like a Q&A. And again, the Q&A might take the form of like, let's do a five minutes hackathon or 10 minutes hackathon, but it's going to be all the Patreon subscribers at that level, and that's going to be recorded. Whether or not it's going to be posted for the non-Patreon subscriber is going to be something that I have to discuss and think about. Um, so but those are the sort of two levels and so those are the ideas i'm thinking about so let's get into this one okay so this is a freebie essentially um but like i said it's something i'm thinking about what can happen with a level of patreon subscribe subscription and so um so let's see if we can do binary encoding um with c plus plus and we're going to try and demonstrate using maps and what we're going to do is have a have the c plus plus application write something out some data out that's contained in a map and have the Go application read it. And so that should be pretty clear demonstration that we can do encoding and decoding of protobuffer messages using C++. Now the support is there. Remember the reason I said I, haven't, I didn't do it is one, I haven't programmed C++ in years. Two, um, the environment set up the environments. I did not want to corrupt my environment because as I was trying to set it up, it sort of messed with my Go environment. And since my primary focus right now is Go, I do not want to do that. I set up the Dart and Java one, Java one because those did not conflict with my Go environment. Now there could have been something I was doing wrong. So my approach for today is that I'll use a Linux environment. So this is my Mac environment up at the top in this window. And so this directory should look familiar. 
it's our section 22 like i said part one two and three and this is when we talk about pro buffer and um, the section in question which is we talk about maps and so on and then part four i think is where we did some other stuff uh, i can't remember what we did in part four and um here is my linux environment and it's pretty empty there's nothing there um it's pretty new i set it up it's running on virtualbox actually so i have virtualbox running on my mac and i install ubuntu linux and create an account i logged in and so the only thing I've done is do something like this after I set up install it is sudo apt install minus y and add install pkg.config. I did build essential, which is something I always do when I use to set up in Linux environment. And then I end up set up like ZSH because I like it and stuff like that, but that's not essential. These are the two things. Build essential is basically all the tools you need for building, building stuff like C++ compiler and make and all this other stuff. And the PKG config is one of the requirements for gRPC to compile it. So, all right, so I did that. Once that was installed, no, Let's, the, the specific part that I think the user is asking about, um, so, you know, like I say, can we at least see a part that's used um, of map, the map part using C++. So I think that part was um, right here. Uh, but it was so essentially we're playing with example two, right, from part three. So that's gonna give us a place to start to jump off. Um, and so let's go to gRPC website. And I want to go to Docs, Quick Start, and I'm gonna open that in a separate tab. And then I'll click on C++. And if you look at the C++ guide for gRPC, it tells you to install gRPC in your system, follow these instructions. To run the example code, please ensure you have PKG config, which is what I just showed you that's one of the things I installed um, you know, for Ubuntu. And this is essentially the same command, sudo, app get install i use minus y so it doesn't prompt me you just go ahead and do the installation and yada 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 now let's follow through the installation so i'll open this in yet another tab and so this is how you install it says currently the default choice for building on unix like base system is make to install grpc for c++ on your system using make follow the build grpc C++ instructions to build from source and then install locally using make install. Straight so far so good, right? This also install proto buffer compiler, which is proto C. We know that we have to have the proto C for comp um, compiling the proto um, protocol files, and then of course if you have gRPC stuff in there, you need the plugin for gRPC. So this installation does both. It gives you proto C and the C++ gRPC plugin. Whew, sweet! You can't see my thumbs up. So now we just have to go do it. So let's go over here. And so they say app get install build essential and auto config. Well, I'll rerun this because I did not do the auto config and lib tool. So let me rerun it with this. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to go over here to my build system and say sudo because I'm not a app user, um, a root user. I'll do minus y so it doesn't prompt me. And let's see if there's anything that was missing. Oh, and there's something that was missing and it needs to install auto config so good that we follow in the installation okay if you plan to build from source and run test install the following also so these are the devs so dash dev so you can install the library and basically that's the runtime library and then you can have the developers library which might in install source in addition to some other um, the header files especially if it doesn't install all of the source usually it install the header file that you can include because you want to develop against this library so you need the header files whereas if you're just writing applic running application against the library you just need the library compile library in place if none of this makes sense to you don't worry it's just sort of like a way um in which c plus plus type and c like environments operate or app environment that do um dynamically linked libraries in um and Java in a way also, right? Uh, you can write a Java application and have the jar be provided or do a Uber jar where it's included. We know that though for Go, this is not a problem because every Go application is statically linked, which means everything that it needs to run is included. So you don't have to worry about dynamic libraries and having libraries installed. 
All right, let's stick to C plus. It's so hard to start. So for people who are not familiar, I'm trying to draw a thing that you might know. But let's just start us. I'll try and remember to stick to C plus as I'm bringing in too many other references. All right, so we're going to leave out some of that stuff because um, we are not, we're going to build from source. You plan to build from source. So it seemed like we plan, well, we're building from source, right? So let's go ahead and just install all this stuff. And then minus Y, let's do that. And then let's grab the next command. And okay. Lastly, see the prox um, C section below if you do not yet have the proxy compiler installed. Okay, so they tell you about Mac, Windows, okay, proxy. By default, pro gRPC uses proxy pro buffer, which we already know. Um, so has not been installed, follow the command. The following command can be used to install it. So I think um, before we can even do this, we have to clone the repo, the gRPC repo. So uh, <laughs> build in from source, make on Unix system. Let's see. Um, da -da -da. Okay, so seems like we should get the source. All right, so CDGRPC. So it seems like we should be able to. Now, what was confusing is that it says here. Um, so if I look at da, 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 build the instruction up at the top here, let's see, build in from source. It goes through how to install all this thing, all these things, but we never see where to, let's see, maybe if we go here, we can see where to clone the proto buffer source. So there we go. Um, C++ installation instruction. Let's go here and let's do this. So we already, I think we already did all of this, but just to be sure. And this is exactly what I'm talking about. Um, <laughs> this just seems to be such a nightmare, like going down a rabbit hole of things you have to install to get this to work. But all right, let's do it anyway. Uh, to get the source, download one of the Tire G zip files in on the release page. Um, you can also get the source by git cloning it. Make sure you have also cloned the sub modules and generated um, the configure script. Skip this if you are using a release.tgz or zip file. Um, so we'll just grab from source since we went through all this trouble already. We'll do this. And still notice my directory is still empty, right? Except for any hidden file that I already had. Um, but I don't set up my directory entry, so I'll clone now. And so now I should have proto buffer. And the next thing is to cd into the proto buffer directory and get the sub module recursively. All right. So we'll wait. This is almost finished. And all right, it's finished. Let's go to the proto c directory and let's run this git. Up sub module update recursively. So it's going to go fetch updates for those sub module. And then it said we should run autogen.sh. And then to build and install C proto buffer runtime and a proto buffer compiler policy, execute the following command. All right. So we run autogen. And I think we can run all these commands one for the other. So this configure command sort of create your make file make runs the command in the make file. If you don't have a make file, don't worry about this. Make check just um, run a particular target. By default, when you do make, it's gonna run um, whatever the default target is. And there's a way to write your make files, your make file so that the default, there's something that's the default, but we're not gonna go through that. If you don't know anything about make file, now is not the time to learn, trust me. Um, you just have to spend some time learning. And then now we're doing the, st the install target and because that's going to be copying files to our system, we need root permission. So that's why we have to run that with sudo. The other ones, those stuff are going to build locally within our directory. And then this LD, sudo LD, is after we, when we run make install, it will install some libraries that SO files, for example, share object. And by running ld config, we refresh and update those libraries. 
so that if we write application now that links again those library the system knows about it it's like yeah, update the database of shared object on the system if we don't run this command um, it might not find them when we try to run an application that's built against those library so that's that's why those two commands need um, to be run with sudo um, so now um, I think once we've done that um, let's see we're not so yeah we will we'll need to, I'll keep a uh, I'll copy this and keep it to the side because when we go to compile actually I'll copy this whole thing and keep it in my notes to the side because when we go to build we might actually we have, might have, we'll have to do some of this stuff we'll have to be able to tell the compiler where to find the dependencies and so on so um, we'll need that we need that information um, again if you are looking at this video uh, you're just curious then cool continue looking at it um, but for information purpose but if um, you're building C++ program then these are things you should know already um, uh, da, da, da. yeah we might gotta do some back and forth coming back and so on but we'll see um, all right so so far so good so now we just need to run these command like I said so I'll copy and run um, paste it all and just run all the commands well actually let me do let me show you what I mean um, so let's do there that command finish running ls and if you look here we should not have a make file so you'll see the make that am for um, macros and that's the include files to be included some stuff that we're going to generate for our make files our make file can use but this is just from my long history of doing C and C++ type development. So um, I won't, I didn't actually look at those make files to see. So if after we run um, that configured there, it's going to generate a make file for us and then make it is going to um, do the make stuff, um, execute our make file. So I'll speed this up. So um, because I don't know how long this is going to take, but, and this is boring anyway. And you can see, just to come back and show you, you can see this line here that says create and make file. And that's what I was talking about. It created several make files and several subdirectories. And now it's going to start um, doing the run the make command to execute those target. And the make command is doing some checks and then it's going to start compiling stuff and so on. All right. Again, I'll let this run and come back when it's completed. Actually, um, it was still doing all the make stuff before. It was still make it, making it correct. So now is where it's running the make command and it's saying all recursive is the target it's going to use by default and now it's going into all the directories and running their make command um their make file and as you can see each um, line now is compiling like c files and making um object files and then those object files are going to be linked into archives or um shareable objects right libraries so archives and so files are both libraries it's just one it's just the way in which your package one of them is meant to be like a dynamic link link li linkable library like the so one shareable object all right again we'll leave this and come back after all the files these are c plus plus files being compiled compiled we can see this from the cxx and we'll come back when it's all built all right so um our command finally finished and just in case you're wondering it took an hour so um I could have probably run this on my one of my Linux servers and it might have finished um, faster, uh, but that's what we're using is this VM with um in VirtualBox. So, okay, so that's finished. So that was these first two, the configure and make. So then we can run make check and make in um, sudo make install. So let's do make check. So we're gonna follow the instructions verbatim and don't try to shortcut anything because I don't want after all of this spending several hours to get this working. It doesn't work because I skipped a step or something like that, or tried to shortcut something. Um, so make check is doing whatever, um, not sure. Um, look like all libraries are built, so maybe it's doing a sample test. Yeah, so go test. So yeah, um, making sure that we could compile a simple application probably, um, and then run some basic things. So go test all CC, so whatever, but um, We'll let that run. All right, so finally, after another hour, 
and it even took longer to run the test um, but we have successfully um, installed it because all our tests passed no failure etc um, this really sucks uh, I gotta say it's only because after an hour of installation that I decided to do the make check and I didn't want to cut any corners and I was well I didn't want to stop it either because I want to make sure everything was successful I could have but this is really hard. Um, if you guys are see, seeing this video, um, just know though I was contemplating just terminating this whole thing. Um, I decided to do it, so I can't blame anyone but myself. But it's, it's just, this is what I complain about with these languages. Just imagine that you had to compile and run tests and six tests took uh, almost 30 minutes to compile and run. Like, what is your productivity like at work if this is what you're doing, right? And so that's why I move away from programming languages like C and C++. I love C. I really do. I used to love C++. But these things are getting increasingly more difficult for me to actually spend my time and say I want to do any work in them. But here we are. Let's continue. So we've done the make check. Now we have to actually install it. So let's do that. This should go fast. It really should. So install and so it's putting it in place wherever and let's get the next command in the meantime and like I said this is to make sure to be the shared libraries that are installed um, the SO files and so on um, that we can access them but I guess it compiled everything but it didn't quite link them so maybe now it's doing it but here we have some archives here being installed and there's a libprotoc.so, that share object, and the archive file, so okay, uh, okay. Let's see, oh, so 43 seconds. Let's see now how long this is gonna take. All right, so that finished sort of immediately, it was pretty fast. All right, so now we have protoc install. I can type which, protoc, and it's in my path, and that is good. But that's only protoc. Um, we are not gonna do gRPC because all we're interested in doing is trying to understand how to um, get um, our C++ to do some things, use the map from um, thing. All right, so what I'll do is go up to my um, Mac here and um, let's create a directory for part five. So we call this part five. And we said that though we we're looking basically at part three and example two is what we're really looking at. And so let's copy that to our part five directory. Okay, and um, da -da -da -da. Uh, yeah, let's um, let's start our Visual Studio Code editor. Um, let's see what's going on. So really, we need to do the development over on the other side, right? Um, we're not really not doing the development here on this computer. It's rather on the other computer. And so maybe I'll call this uh, example one. Okay, that's where we're gonna start with. And so uh, let's close this. We're not gonna work with that goal code. And we're still gonna have our model because we're going to be working with this very simple example and we're gonna generate both Go and C++ code and we'll try to use the same example that encodes it. Okay, so that sounds fine. So there's something that um, I wanna show you guys. So let me do this. Let me actually close this. And from my Mac, the way I've set it up is that I can SSH to this Unix box as this user, and I can do so without a password. I can just do SSH, and I can type Veril, but I'm already the Veril user, so I don't have to type that. And this is the IP address for that Linux box that I've run in, in VirtualBox. Um, it's using bridge adapter, so it's a peer on my network, like if it's another computer. And so you can see I can log into this um, box and here is that proto buffer that we're that actually we're in here and we installed everything and as you know so I'm on the same machine because I could do touch this and then if I do LS you'll see this appear and I could remove this okay so same box and so I don't need to be in there two times I just want to show you that I could log in um, remotely no I'm gonna cover this in my go in my embedded video how to do SSH keyless login but for um, those of you who are not following that, the way you do it is you do SSH that key gen and you follow the prompt and create a 
public and private key if you don't already have one do not use a password when it prompts you for a password just press enter and after you finish that then you're going to do ssh dash copy id and then you press enter you type the host name that you want to um, copy to so for example viral at 10.10.100.106 again the viral is redundant because i am logged in as viral on this machine but just in case this was another username and then you type that and when you press enter it's going to prompt you for the password on the remote system if you don't already have a key and it copies your key over for you so that way you can do passwordless login okay so now that's all set up let's clear up our screen a little bit clear up our screen why did I show you that? Well, because of this rather funky thing that Visual Studio has. So what you're seeing here is my remote um, development for Visual Studio Code. So if you don't have that, would you go to the plugins? Okay, by the way, let me zoom in a little bit. You go to plugins and you search for remotes and you can select this guy and then click uh, install. And so it install a few things like remote development. There's this whole pack that we install um, not only remote SSH, but remote container, remote WSL. I think I only install remote container and remote SSL because I don't use Windows or Linux. I do not have Windows machine, so I did not install the one. So if you want to install everything, go with the remote development and just hit install. If you want to be like me and just install the ones that you care about, like SSH and container. So I'll be doing the remote container development when we get into for go on the run, go on the run. So this which is this set of videos when we get into section 26, I believe it is when we're doing like microservices and all that stuff. But um, OK, so if you want to get a jump on what we're going to be doing, then install remote SSH. Once you have a remote SSH install. What you can do is click on this guy and then it asks you to configure. Um, you can add a, um, I think this is my remote SSH config file, this guy. And so you put in all the hosts that you want to connect to. So you can see I have to this machine 10.10.11. So I'll copy and paste this and notice that I just do 106. Um, that's the host name and um, the IP address is 106. I could give the host name something better than 106. I could call this my um, Ubuntu on Mac, for example, right? That would be a much better name. And then um, the user I'm going to be connecting that is Vero, like I said. And so once I close this, notice I connect pops up here. And now I can click on this. And then I think I do connect to host in current window, or you can do in a new window. Um, so let's do in current window, see what it's like. Um, so bam, it's going to start connecting. It's going to say setting up, um, initializing visual studio Code, um, video studio code code on that server. And if we jump over to that machine and see what's going on now, if you do LS minus LA, you can see this, or you can do something fancy like XA minus LA. If you want to see colorful stuff, um, ooh. all right, minus recursively. All right. So, all right, actually, no, um, I don't want to do all that, but let's see, LS, uh, EXA, let's do some fancy color, LS minus A, and then let's do um, Visual Studio Code. Ah, there we go, VS Code. I wish I'd show you this before to show you how none of that stuff was being installed, but now it's being installed. You can see from the time on the server, if I do um, date, you'll see that oh, it's 18.15 on this server, um, UTC. And so you can see how these files were now being created there. And so it's finished. And so um, now all that is finished. I can do, notice how it opened up a terminal on that server. It already logged me in to that remote server. So I don't need, no longer need the other prompt that I was using. And so if I do open, it's offering to open um, a directory remotely. So I can say, okay, and it's gonna connect. And so, you know what though, um, let's do this. Um, that's all nice and dandy, but let's create a new folder and let's call it over there. Let's call it part five. And then um, we know that we wanna do the protobuf stuff over there. Um, I can actually delete. So how many windows does this thing open? Oh, still the one window. Um, so. 
let's do this. Let's remove that um, proto buff directory because we don't need that. So RF minus RF proto buff. We don't need that anymore. Um, I'll have to come into the directory though. Do, am I still in there? Nope, I'm not still in there. Good. Um, and then let's create um, free up some space. Um, the other thing um, that I want though is I want my example here, my example code here to be over there. Now, what I should have really done is just copy the entire di directory, part five directory. That's what I should have done. Um, so let me show you how we do that. So let's remove part five directory here, rmdir part five. So this is the directory I created. Um, and then let me go back from my Mac and I'll do SCP minus R for recursive. I want to copy part five directory. I want to copy it to 10.10.100.105 and then into the root directory over there and let's do that and so let's wait a little bit and I should start seeing a directory show up in a minute um, da, 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 da. SCP okay hmm. it's taking too long to copy um, Oh, 105. Uh, 105 doesn't exist. It's 106. There we go. Taking too long. Um, so there we go. Completed. So now I have my part five here with our example one and, of course, um, the, the file. Okay, protobuf three. Well, here's another thing. Notice how I don't have any syntax highlighted. So install all the plugin that you need for that remote environment. And so here I noticed it didn't install the protobuf one that I had. So let's see, protobuf three. Um, which one was I using before? Um, okay, you see, this is the one that's installed on my Mac. Install an SSA Ubuntu on Mac because um, this is the one I already have on my um, Macintosh computer. So that's why it's offering me to uninstall it, but I can also install it remotely. And so I'll do that. Um, the other thing is I want my Golang development environment. So, so my Go code. So let's do this. Um, Go. Let's look for Go. And so yes, I want to install this over there too. Um, as a matter of fact, let me do this and let's see what else. Install um, local install. So let me see some of the local install that I want over there. Um, I'm not going to do Flutter. I like my rainbow pair. So, oh, is that installed there? It didn't give me an option to install that remotely. Um, okay. Reload. Let's see. Let's see. Mm -hmm, come on. Man, this thing is... So this, I was hoping to get out a few videos today, but oh well. Uh, okay, so this extension is installed globally. All right, that's good. I would like it globally. Uh, let's see what else. Um, output colorizer. Okay, that's good. Um, what else? I don't need Angular installed over there. Um, no, don't need that. Don't need that. C++. Hmm. Yes, we should install C++ stuff because we're going to do C++ development. Run code. We should probably install that. Um, Corona tools. I have no idea what this is. What is this? Um, I should un uninstall this. I don't know why I have this installed. Hmm. I don't know about Corona development. I'm going to re remove that because I don't know why I have that installed. Um, custom CSS and Dart and all this other good stuff. I'm not going to worry about that. Docker image. That edit config. What is this for? <laughs> Git graph. That's nice. Um, Git history, uh, Git lens. Um, I should install remotely. I like that. Uh, Grillo, no. Da, da, da. So, indent rainbow. Install on my Mac. Um, <laughs> all right. <laughs> so I'm totally wasting a lot of time installing plugin. I just gotta get my environment right. Um, pretty code. I like that. So, gotta install it remotely. All right, so all the rest I'm gonna ignore. All right, so you get the idea. Basically look at what you have installed on your local machine 
and did you like to have installed remotely so that your remote um, Visual Studio plugin um, pretty much allows you. But notice what I'm doing. I'm still developing on my laptop with Visual Studio Code GUI and it is making an SSH connection over to that Linux environment, which I have run in. And let me show you. Um, so I have Visual um, Virtual Box with this Linux environment running. And this is that Linux um, console. It's not a graphical environment that I install. I just use Virtual Box um, server. And you know what? I'm able to connect and do development. And this is exactly what I want to do for my Go robot stuff. So if you follow me for that, you know, you have a sneak, sneak peek at what I intend to do. So, okay, so that stuff should be installed. Let's close that off and let's go back to code. Okay, so now we have that installed. Remember what we did in order to have our code compile and run, right? How do we um, compile our... So let's go into the part five directory. Uh, let's go into exercise one and type ls and we should see our go code module and model directory so if we type proto c minus minus go underscore out and we're not going to use plugin so we say equal and we do dot and then we'll say um minus i for the model directory include the model directory and then we'll see we'll say demo that Proto. And if we run this, okay, uh, Protogen C is not installed. Uh, so, you know what? I'll do my Go development on the other side and because I don't want to spend any time installing. Well, let's see here. What if I do apt search and I do Proto C? Let me see if it's just available. Proto C that gen that go. Is it even available? If it's available, I'll just install it. If it's not, I'll just stick to doing C++ on one machine and copy in the generated file to the other. Okay, so it's not in. Okay, so um, let's just do C++. So instead of saying go out, we'll do C++ out. C++ out. And does that work? Okay, maybe we need to do CPP. All right, so that runs successfully. And so now we have a demo.ph and then a demo.cc file. Now, if you remember what it said here about how you compile your program, you compile your program by saying C++, that's a compiler. You give it your program name, your C++ program name, and then this is the generated program buffer C file. And then you pass this. Now, what this means is this backtick, it means is run this command for people who don't know Linux or um, run this command in a subshell. And so this command will run and give you what are the options that you need to pass to your compiler. So let's say that I copy this just to show you what it's look like. And so I run this by itself and notice how it says that we should compile with pthread, include the include directory, libraries are in the lib directory, and we want to link against the protobuf. If you don't know anything about this, don't worry. This, this is for the C++ people. So, um, all right. So now we have that. What we need is a an application. So in this command directory, um, sure, why not? Let's just make a main.c. Actually, if we put a C program next to a Go program, it's going to, Go is going to think that oh, it should compile the Go program also. So let me make a directory, call it, um, go app and then put the main that go in that directory and then make another directory call cpp app and let's go so we'll rename this cc go underscore app and cpp app here i'll create a new file called main.cpp all right so for c plus um, let's do some quick coding okay all right, so I haven't written a C++ code in a long time, so let's see if this even worked. So I'm gonna run it. Ah, I thought I had my plugin for run code. Okay, that's fine. Let's um, start compiling our code with um, 
with this whole command, even though we don't need it. So G++, and the command I want to run is, all right, so control C, I'm going to go into the directory. It's a bit slow. Oh, so it put um, my code, uh, is this in the, I didn't put it in the model directory. It just dropped it right here. So um, model. So yeah, I didn't put it in my model directory. So let's move the demo that that stuff into model directory. Let's put it here. All right, so that's fine. Um, so let's go into CMD and then C++ directory. And so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna say G++. And if I do G++ and then I just give it main.cpp and run it, this should run correctly. Okay, it doesn't know what iOS is. Um, uh, see that out. Oh, see, that's how long I have a program. See that out. See out, sorry. It's how you write stuff to the output. And I run it again. And I should get an executable, which I see is A that out. And if I run it, it should say hello world. All right, good. So we're rocking now. All right. So let's compile this now with all the good stuff that they suggest, which if you remember, they said we should run our application with this guy, right? Run this in a subshell. So I'm gonna copy that. I'm gonna go back here and I'm going to do bam and run it. And our application should compile without any issue because even though we say look in all these other places, it doesn't matter. We're not using all that stuff. So great. The other thing I wanna do is include my directory that I have, um, you know, stuff in which is if i go up one directory go up another one and then i go down to model that's where i have our um our demo.h file and to make sure that this still compile what i'll do is i'll say include demo.cc or pb.h and so if i could do this and my program still compile that means that i'll my minus i here also um, is working and pulling in that file from the right um, path. And so it looks like that is still working. Let's wait. Yep, there we go. All right, so I'm going to go and tack on one other thing. So in addition to doing that, I want to also tack on my go up one directory, da da da, and then model. And then I want to get the uh, demo that pb that cc file. And now I should be able to compile, okay, so no such file, okay, that's because I typed the correct name, command A, let's go, PB, B, and so this again should still compile successfully, we're compiling the generated protobuffer ccpp file, or cc file, but we're not using anything from it right now, we just want to make sure everything is compiling, and it's taking a long time, and let me again let me increase the font here for my window so you're not straining your eyes to see this so let me bring this over here and so yep that should be um that's compiled correctly let's clean up our screen and then we should have our application work the same way okay good so now this is happening now i'm not going to get um source completion um, or suggestion in my C++ here because it does not know where this demo.pbh file is coming from. Um, so I can sort of open this file and take a look and see protocol buffer stuff or whatever, um, what's available. I can look at outline. Um, does it show the outline? Nope, it doesn't show any outline. So totally not helpful. Um, let's see. Yeah, uh, namespace, any metadata. I'm trying to find some stuff that we can use. Um, <laughs> search, okay. Uh, that's interesting, a whole lot of stuff. Search request, blah, blah, blah. So it looked like um, we have a class here called search request. Well, let's go cheat a little bit. Let's go on our Go application. For Go application, what happened? When we're trying to do this, we just pull in the, um, so, we can do this uh, install all um, so when we're trying to do this we imported 
um, the source request class or type from the models package. So I imagine in C++, we'll have to, when we, we we'll have to say that we're using this namespace or we'll have to reference the namespace and specifically access search request the same way. Uh, my guess is that search request here, this class we want to use, is in some namespace. And I'm not sure, I'm not seeing it um, just yet, but namespace, model, other, and thing. Um, is that the namespace that we use? Well, let's go take a look at our protobuffer. So yeah, namespace, model, other, and thing. So my fault for using such a long namespace. Let's shorten this to just call it um, package. Da -da -da -da. So let's call it model also. All right. Let's see. Yep, model. Let's just call it model. And then um, let's rerun our code when this is finished. And so we'll regenerate the source code here so that it's just in one namespace so we don't have to worry with this whole long um, line of thing. And it looked like um, this is a create maybe message. What is this? I don't know. I'm not exactly sure how to use a C++ thing, but while that's happening, let's come down here, scroll down. And so um, it's tells us how to install Unix tool, all that's good stuff. So the installation is done. So we're, we're done with the installation. And let's see what's happening. Okay. And is there a guide for C++? Yep, there it is. And let's scroll down, put a buffer language guide, C++ reference, C++ generated code guide. Should probably look at something like that. Um, but let's scroll down. Where to find the example C++ code? Um, so if you have that, 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 it gets generated. Um, okay. So minus CPP, we did all that good stuff already. Um, the generated proto buffer API. Let's look at some of the generated code and see what classes and function the compiler has created for you. If you look at address book, da, 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 you can see that you have a class for each message you specify, which makes sense. Look closer to the person class, you can see that the compiler has generated accessors for each. Again, we have seen that before too. Um, so if we're talking about this, we have a message called person with string name, integer ID, email, and then phone type as an enum, then phone message, phone number um, as another message, and then repeated phone number. And then they have address book, which repeats on people, okay, or person, call of people. And so if we go here and we look at name, has name, da da da. So each field has some accessors for the person um, class, which makes sense. Um, then we have phone, has phones, and let's go. See, the getter exactly does the, the name as the field and lowercase, and the setter name begin with set. It's also an as matter for each singular required or optional field. I don't know if that matters for us because in Proto Buffer Tree, you don't have the requires thing. A repeated field also have some special methods. If you look at the method for repeated phone, you will see that you have size, get a person's phone number using the index, update a personal phone number, add, whatever. Okay, so we have all that good stuff. Standard message methods. Each message class also contain a number of other methods that lets you check or manipulate the entire message, including is initialize, um, string debugging, da da da, copy from, clear. Okay, these and the IO methods described in the following section implement the message interface shared by all C++ proto buffer. All right, so we're gonna want to do the IO one. Now, the way we're gonna demonstrate that how we can exchange messages between C++ and um, Go is we'll write to a file and then have the other language uh, program the other language read it instead of messing around with socket communication, right? So it's the same thing. Once you encode a message, whether you write it to a file, send it over the network, it's just bytes at that point. So all we can care, we care about is that we can represent the binary formats. Okay. Finally, each proto buffer class has method for writing and reading message of your chosen type using the protocol buffer binary format. These include serialize the string, which serializes the message and store the bytes in a given string, given string, 
Note that the bytes are binary, not text. Um, parse from parse from string, serialize to stream, which is what we will want to do. We're going to be using these two to write it out to some input and output file. So okay, so that's that. Uh, <laughs> okay, write in a message. So let's try using your proto buffer classes. The first thing you want your address book application to be able to do is write personal detail to your address book file. To do this, you need to create and populate instances of your proto buffer message class and then write them out to output stream. Here's a program which reads a address book file, add one new person to it, and based on user input, and writes the new address back out to file. So let's just see. We have this already. We include our header file. We use we have this standard using S, um, STD, the standard template, um, the, the STD standard, um, what was I say, packages, um, not packages. But anyway, we have using a stand, standard namespace, namespace. And then we do this. Um, this function fills in a person message based on user input. So let's see how they do it. So enter user input ID, okay, and then person that set um, ID. So we just have a person, and it's just a pointer to person. So tutorial um, colon person, okay. Where does tutorial person come from? If we look at this package tutorial, so this tells me that for us, if we go back to our code, we're using model. Well, we didn't rerun it yet. So let's go here and go to our terminal and let's rerun our proto C generator again. And I didn't like how it saved it just now. Um, it didn't save it in the place that I expected to. So I'll put model as the output directory. I'll run that. Okay. Um, this is from the wrong directory. So let's open up another directory um, terminal here go up go up oh, this is really slow though uh, but this this could be this computer um, this VM that I'm running go down to and then um, we should have the model directory here and so now if I rerun proto this that and notice oh it recreated with just model namespace all right so I wonder if there's a way, so let me close this, if there's a way to um, include the directory that you want to code from in Visual Studio Code. So for example, if for this current development, I can say that I want to, so is there something that says C++ development, and let's, let me check that out. So, all right, let me reduce this font there a little bit because it's probably too big. So what I did was once I install, I had to install the, the C++ um, package from Microsoft, then I open up the command palette. And so you can do that in Visual Studio Code. Oh, so you open the command palette. So then you go to this, open command palette, and then you type C++. And then when I look for edit, configuration UI. It might be somewhere at the bottom here, but you select this. And then once you select this, you scroll down and you look for include path. And on the next line, I added the directory that we're using, which is Twilder means home directory. And this is, remember, this is from the Unix side. So home directory part five, and then star star just means like all nested directory. Once I did that, now I can come back here and let's see if we can edit some code and get some command line completion. So we're just simply trying to initialize an object. So in C++, you put the type first, followed by the ID. So for us, it's going to be model that, and then we want to use um, search request, I believe, is what we had, search request, and then pointer to, and then let's just call it MSG, or just call it request. And then equals to new model that search request. Now in C plus plus, um, it's a little bit different um, than how we use new. But here I'm still seeing an error. So why am I still seeing an error? 
Um, namespace name is not allowed. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I, I using that. This is like this. It's like that. So I forget. I'm using a different language. I gotta keep try keeping these things straight. So okay. So that gives us our new request. And so we can output this now and say. Um, so now if I do C out da da da, and then I go. This is my request, and I can do da da da, and I can do request that and this is where the difference is we can do um da, da, da. let's see is clear or something like that is initialized and it shouldn't be initialized okay um is this thing a function um or just a type so i think boolean yep const so boolean and then enter a end of line and now let's see if we can compile and run this thing so here i am in this directory let's go back to part five this is taking a long time cmd or oh, exercise one cmd c plus plus and let's do gpp and let's run it again and it should compile successfully oh man this is this is probably the only thing I'm going to be able to do today. <laughs> All right. Okay, it runs successful, compile successfully and run it. And then um, this is my request. And then we check to see if it's initialized. It shouldn't have been initialized because I think we, we didn't do anything. Um, uh, let's do this. Let's do is request that initialize. Let's do is initialize. And then, yeah, I'll do that. And then let's do request that clear. There's some clear method that you can call. And so there we go, clear. And that's supposed to clear everything. And so um, semicolon is required here. And um, we'll put this back in the next line. That's fine. And so I'm hoping that with one, it says, it was initialized after I clear it it should not be initialized anymore um, but let's see man this is super slow um, thankfully I don't do C++ development well this, this might just be my server that I'm running this on. I'm running this on my Mac so it's Linux running it within VirtualBox running on my Mac so I guess I can't complain so yeah it still says initialize um, I don't know why, but but that's okay. We can um, create a function that sort of initialize our values. And if we look at the example they have here, if you go down to the bottom here and look at this example that they have, um, so we have a function that initializes a person, and so it prompts for you know some values. It read it, um, put it into some variables, and then it sets it on these um, set these different things. So we can do sort of the same thing and then um, print out at the end, the, we'll have a properly initialized um, thing. So let's go back here. And so let's see our proto buffer. What we have, we have params and it, it's a map of string and string. And so we have query, string Q. So we're not gonna do any prompting. What we were gonna do is just have a function that we're going to call init request okay um and actually we'll have our function just init create an initialized request and just return it so our function is going to return model that search request and a pointer to of this thing and is going to be create request and that's what it's going to do it's going to Take all this good stuff and we'll just move it into here. And after we'll finish, we'll return it. So let's do this and return request. And what do, will we put inside of a request? Well, we have a string. So we have um, a string query is equals to this is my query from C++. 
okay that is my string i want to put in there and we'll put it in request that set q and so here we have allocated q and q i, I don't know the difference so this is allocated q which is a um, pointer to a string this is set q which is pointer to a correct um thing like this is nuts all right so there's three overloaded um three overloaded versions of it um and so what we can see if we scroll along here there's there's a second one so string reference value um oh man okay doesn't matter so we'll use essentially that second one and so we'll do q and that's gonna work as a reference parameter um in terms of our map though request that um let's do set and so no let's see what else is there so we have params so we have clear params makes sense we could clear out everything in the parameter and let's do prams so what do we have we have parameters we can get the size how many things are in the parameter we can get um so params um, let's see what else okay so it doesn't seem anything other than being able to get the param clear the parameter um mutable parameters what is this so mutable parameters what is that um so that returns a parameter for us Mm hmm um what does this return this is params and it returns like a constant okay so we can't change that one so we want this mutable parameters here and let's do this and so yeah it returns mutable parameter which is some google protobuf maps da 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 yada yada and let's see if we do auto um let's call it params um equals this now i'm doing auto because i don't want to think about what the type is that this thing should be it's going to be this long ridiculous thing and so i'll just let c plus plus figure that out and we should be able to um i don't know i'll just leave it as that and so let's do this let's do um auto request i'm being lazy right now and then let's do create request so i should be able to create request and then i should do c out um request that q is going to be this that request that q right get the q and then let's do it end line and then uh, let's take out now oh, we can leave hello world it's been there forever so let me save this run this and see what happens okay so chris it was not declaring this scope ah you kidding me okay so because it doesn't know that i have this function be below so this is one of those things with c and c plus plus and so up here i'll put the same type and i'll do this which basically say declare that i have this function and then define it below here so usually you'd have a separate include file for that sort of stuff whatever so it's a forward declaration in, in other words um, let's see come on come on all right so it runs successfully good so we can get back our message that's good so now the only thing we need to see is can we and uh, what about if we were to get the so this we do request that params right so this is going to be the um immutable one not this guy i want params i want the immutable ones this guy and maybe um all right let's do size let's do size so I'm gonna do da 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 e n d l c out okay 
something like that. So it's going to print out how many things I have in my map. And so if I compile again, we should expect this to be zero because we didn't add anything. We got it here, but this is just C++. It doesn't complain even though we created this variable params and never used it, but that's a good thing. So, um, so let us compile. And we just make a little bit of change at a time and we see what happens. So this should say, yeah, there are zero values in our map, which is what we expect. Now that we have params, which is our mutable parameter, we can say that. And what is this? Is this a pointer? Um, yes, it's a pointer. So we, we have to do this and see what's available. So at, um, look like you can pass in a key to get a value at um, a specific, um, right? Like you can pass in a key and get that value. Um, this begin does allow you to iterate over it. CN, CN and all this stuff is for iterator. We have count, we can empty it. Um, find, um, insert. This is what we want. Insert. So insert first and last. Um, so these are using what iterators? Hmm. Again, why is it using iterator? So let's see if, let's just hope. Let's see what, what this is there. So operator equals. So this should also work. So we have a couple of ways. We'll try a few. So I think that how this one should work. So we should be able to say that we have, um, let's say key one or let's say key zero because why not is equals to value zero. And then let's do this a few times. One, no, uh, come on. So this is two. And that's all we really want to see is that we can be able to use a map. That's the request. And so <laughs> I can access the map. So now we can, let's see if we can put stuff in a map. I'm seeing, um, it says expected an operator. Um, why is it saying expected an operator? Because quick fix. Why is this? Hmm. I would expect my key to be so operate. Oh, um, no, I don't need to do that. I need to do this because I said operator that. Well, the way you call it operator is different in C++ anyway. So um, this seems to be overloaded on that map. So let's see if this works. Um, the operator overloaded the operator, the index operator, but yet this still is complaining. Um, must have an integer integral or on scope enum. All right, so that's not working. Um, a string, yeah, map of string of string. Why is that working? Uh, that's that's nuts. All right, so let's see. What if if we dereference and then try to put it in a map? So dereference and then try putting in a map. Would that work? So. It seemed like it likes that. Uh, what a nightmare. If it crashes, that means that, uh, or we don't get back any return, that means that's not the right way to do it, but we're just trying. So let's see. So I have the mutable map here. I dereference it and then use the index operator. It looked like the index oper operator was overridden for the pointer, but who knows? With C++, everything is funny. Um, so let's compile. It should compile fine. I don't see any warning. Whether or not it runs, that's a different thing. How will we know if it runs correctly is if we see this become three. That's going to tell us that we were successfully able to populate object within that map. Um, now, using the STL library, and I haven't used done C++ in a while, you usually would say insert a peer or something crazy like that or add peer. Um, Oh yeah, it worked. It totally worked. Look at that. So we were able to update that map. Let's see if there's another way we can update the map without going through this. So if we did params that um, insert, and then let's hope that they overwritten key three. And so they open, overwritten this method. Yeah, it looked like we can do it this way. And so value three. And so this should, so this is much straightforward and than doing this other way with the referencing. So let's compile again. And, oh, 
okay so second it didn't like second um it's expecting a hmm yeah it wants it to be an iterator so um yeah it didn't i thought it overwritten so there's three yeah there's some overwritten method here that i cannot access um so i'm not seeing it but okay so it did this way is not working which sucks um it needs an iterator and that's just too much so you just have to do it this way unless you can figure out how to do it with the iterator okay so again this is why i do not program these languages anymore it it's just seems to fight you all the way so now that we have our message um in um initialize right so we create a request let's write out our request to a file so we'll go back here i haven't written in c plus plus in a while so i'm gonna totally go here and just see how to open up a file and so here we go we do a f stream input and we initialize it with the name of the file we say that oh these are the parameters say that it was a binary file and we're going to read from it but for us we're going to say output to write to the file and so um actually here we create one to write to the file so let's just do this write to the file let's copy this and oh we have to do hmm we should do this too it's optional here but we should totally do it now the reason why you see this open and close parentheses is because in c plus plus and in go to i it would work you can introduce a um scope and so you make this variable local to the scope so we'll copy all of this so that's the best way to do it it's just copy and paste um so let's do this and so while we can print out all oh, this other good stuff over there let's keep that um let's take out hello world and let's now just write this out to a file and so should we create a file here let's yeah let's call it um write request request to file and so let's give it a file we'll give it um from cpp or cxx as the file name um that bin for binary okay we don't know exactly it's a protobuffer file binary file um and so let's write that file void write request to file and it takes a string so we're gonna do a string and we can do a reference and its um, file name. And so let's paste this example. Oh, but this guy, this part, have to be inside of our main here. Now, since um, our function, this stuff is in a function, we can take out this um, scope that it created here um, and then save it and okay. Oh, the other thing we have to pass in is what we're trying to write to this file, which is our request. So request. And so for our function here, we're going to, okay, not ampersand, but rather two ampersand. I think it's two ampersand to say reference. Oh no. Um, then it used to be one. That's weird. Um, then we want to say what model that, um, Research, um, search request, search request, um, pointer, and it's our request. Okay, so this should work. All right, and then write request, new request, write request to file. All right, and where is this app come from? I don't know. Save this. All right. Um, why is it complaining? Oh, keep doing the go away of doing um scope resolution. So this is called a scope resolution operator in C++. Oh, well. So, all right, so we're gonna do this. We can give the file name and our file name is fn. And then we're going to do all this good stuff, iOS. And so we need to include iOS um, stream. So I think that's include um, if stream and o stream so maybe o stream is gonna include both of them or f stream so let's see i forgot this stuff here what are we trying to do import 
Okay, F stream is what we want. All right, and we have to include strings too in order to use it. Are you kidding me? Come on, C plus plus, get with the times. F stream and string. It still worked, seemed to work, but yeah, should include it. All right. Um, so then now we have F stream. Is is a type and it's called output and we initialize it. We call this constructor with these parameters. And why is this complaining? Uh, because oh okay, it's not complaining. If address book if this is not zero okay. If you couldn't serialize it to the stream, if request could not be serialized to the stream to output, then we have an error fail to write request to stream. And we return minus one. So we don't return from this function, but if we did, we can say um, we, we return an int and then here we can check what that int is. You know, we can do auto um, err. I'm gonna do some little go ins here. And then do if um, err is equals to not equals to zero, err is not equals to zero, then um, you know return or whatever, return minus one, for example. So we know it's a within um, thing. But we should do all this after we um, we should clean up anyway. So we'll ignore any error handling, and so we'll just leave it as that. Bam, that's why you see go defer comes in nicely. Okay, you could have defer closing this guy, cleaning up, and then doesn't matter how you exit this program, you still get your stuff cleaned up. Um, actually, I can leave this here because it doesn't matter if I don't call it and get the value. So there we go. And so let's see, we should now have, when we run our code, we should see a new file get created here with the protobuffer. So uh, the request was to see how to use maps in C++ with protobuffer. And I think once we can write it to the file, we're good. This video is already very long. And so I'm not going to continue with what I said I was going to do, which was to read it from Go and stuff. Um, the Go code is there where we write out to um, write out the serialize the stuff. So, well, we didn't serialize it. We just print it out, but you can easily change it to read. Um, from from um, from C from Go, all right. Or you can read it back from C plus plus just to make sure. Um, that should be fairly easy because I'm just simply following the example here. Um, that's in the documentation. Well, not quite following that example, but you you see what I've been doing so far. All right, so let's clean up our screen here and let's rerun. And okay, we're not looking at that code. We're looking at this code. And so what is this complaint now? Was not declare, oh, keep forgetting to do that. And so let me copy this, put it up here. And then I do semicolon, save, clean up again, clean up, rerun. And so just a reminder that how this video is gonna have very light editing, except for the thing that took really long time. I'm gonna speed up those. But other than that, most other things are going to stay in because I already spent a ton of time on it. And that's not the only reason why, but I'm trying to get these videos out more frequently. So I'm not going to be spending that much time editing. And so we run it and there we go. We have our from bin file. And if we do exa, for example, minus L, we'll see it all. This bin file is like 75 um, bytes, which is pretty cool if I do um, X dump. Do I have X dump here? Yep. And I do from C bin, you can see that's our message that's encoded there. And we should have go on this machine. We would need protobuf install in order to write some code to read it back. Um, uh, and that is just, let's see here, protobuf, 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 protobuf. There we go. Um, import protobuf syntax. Uh, didn't show you how to install it. Oh, go get protobuf gen.c. So we have the compiler already. So now we just need this um, generator. Well, we don't need protobuf gen, honestly. Um, on this machine, can we not generate in 
um, files but the only thing we really need is the um, da, 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 um, it should install the libraries already for us uh, <laughs> okay let's just go with the flow so okay damn so now that's done and what we should be able to do is in our c plus plus um in our go thing here we should be able to do this we should be able to say that um what we have is model and so why is it saying i can't read the model um i suppose i have the go model there but and I do have BNC, so why is it complaining? I'm not sure. So let's go back. Um, let's open this. So I wasn't going to do it, and now I'm going to end up doing it. And then let's go to go. Oh no, that's not where I want to go. I want to go up to model, and then I want to go build or go install uh, you see it's going to try and compile the c plus plus one also so i do not want it to do that so for model um for now i'm going to move out the c plus plus code so let me move that out move demo pb.cc cc and demo pb that h let me move that up one level because i don't want it to try and compile it and then go install and oh man okay so apt sudo app get install uh, app minus um, install minus y go lang go already installed so what's it saying go install no installation location for da -da -da. go back hmm. yep i don't know why that's behaving that way but that is super weird all right so i'll cut it off here because i don't want to spend time trying to get this to work oh what i can do though uh huh um so now that we have this file um so now that we have this x file here let me copy it over back to my mac system and so print work in directory print work in directory and this let me go back to my mac system and i'll copy it so cd part 5 example and then i'll cd it cmd uh, here and then i'll do scp 10.10.100.106 um, tilde um, bam oh that's not what i wanted so copy paste this from cxx that bin and i'll copy it here and then what i'll do is i will simply close off this connection from 
uh, to close remote connection. So I'm finished doing the Linux side development and now I'm back here on my computer. And so let me close this and then let me just CD up um, a few directory. Oh, um, I wanna go back here and then I do code exercise. So this is where I wanna be. And so let's just do from here. And so this is our request, but um, I'll do ampersand, create a new request, and I'll give it no value. And so what I'd like to do is to read this from CXX, that bin file, which I created and wrote in, on, in Linux. So that's the binary message from that was written in C++. So now uh, what I want to do is read. So I'll say os.open file and open file. Um, I don't need all of this stuff. Um, yeah. Um, so open and um, I want to give it a name. And so it's going to be os.args and then op option one and then we, this is going to give us file and error and then now i can say if err not equals to null let's do log fatal and return Um, so os.args um, one and then the next thing is I can do is f that close and so I can defer that so that I don't have to worry about it and then now uh, we can try reading from that file so let's see model that do we have request that read from file do we have anything in this model that allows us, so all we have is the request itself. We don't actually have anything that tells us, th that allows us to parse file. So to get our message, what we do is we import proto here, ah, there, and then we say proto, proto that on Marshall, and we give it the bytes where the buffers, the data is. So we go buff, and then the message that we want to unmarshal, which is our proto buffer message, which is gonna be CR1 in this case. And the bytes, we can get it by doing, um, let's do, you know what, we could have done, made this a lot easier by doing I owe you till that read all. And so we could say read all, give it a file name, which is os.args1 returns an error and it returns the byte buffer. So we have that and we try, we don't have to worry about closing the file, that's taken care of for us. We pass the buffer there, we on Marshall. And then now we print it out. We do FMT print F and we can see request string request that Q is equals to percent V new line. And then we go our, our request that get Q. And we can do that if we want. We can also do FMT, we can do four key that value come on uh, range over cr1 that get params and then we can do fmt that print f and we can do uh, request that key percent v equals or points to value you know Present V, new line, and then we can do key that value. And that is much easier and straightforward than the craziness we had to do in C. And of course, let's see if we can now compile and run this.
So that's the key. So um, what is this? Lock fatal um, <laughs> F. Let's do it that way. And then let's do cd.cmd and let's do go build and that build and now we just have to run it ah, just have to run it always our oh build cmd so that I run it and it crashed of course because we didn't give it any parameter and we want to do from bin and there we go so we have successfully read the values that were encoded in c plus plus and we use a map all right that's it um took me forever to do this but take care hope this helps someone <laughs> you requested it so all right bye